Hi, welcome to episode 336 of the Corner of Knit and Tea. My name is Laura. I'm also known on Twitter and Instagram as Fluffy Kira. I have a blog, The Corner of Knit and Tea, where every episode show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called The Corner of Knit and Tea, where you can buy my hand spun yarn and patterns. And we are currently spinning for Tour de Fleece. We are on Facebook under Team CKT for Corner of Knit and Tea. There is a Ravelry thread for those of you who are still on Ravelry. And we are also posting on Instagram with the hashtag Team CKT 2021. Hi, how are you? It is Monday, July 5th. It is a holiday here in the United States. And so we are off work, although today I am doing lots and lots of chores. We went to my mother-in-law's for um, the 4th of July holiday, and we just got back a little while ago. It's about 2 o'clock now, and I'm starting on laundry. I need to exercise and, you know, do a bunch of my other daily tasks, and Wes just went to the market, so I thought I would sit down and record a short podcast. I hope that you are doing well and have been crafty in the last few weeks. I have tied up some loose ends and have a few um, finished or partially finished things to show you, as well as I have one new cast on and I made some progress on another project and then lots and lots of spinning because that is where I am spending my time right now. So let's jump right in. Um, today I am not drinking tea. It is about 90 degrees out and when we got home the house was a little bit warm and so I poured myself a Diet Coke with lots of ice and that's where I am sticking. Right now Wes said I should make some iced tea and he's right. I might make a pitcher later um, but as I said I just wanted to sit down and record um, before I get knee deep in chores. So I hope that you are having a wonderful day wherever you are and that you have a nice tasty beverage and let's jump right in. So I have one finish for the week and that is I finished Roxy's sweater and I finished this right after I talked to you last um, on Wednesday the 30th right when I hoped I would. Um, and this is Roxy's sock arms sweater. So what I did is I blended the idea of the sock arm sweater from Telly Bean Knits with um, the actual flax light pattern from Tin Can Knits. And then I used yarns from Haverland, who is um, at Haverland on Etsy, H-A-V-I-R-L-A-N-D. That is linked in the show notes on the website. So um, what I did is I knit the flax in size 8 to 10. Roxy will be 8 this fall, so I wanted to give her some room to grow on. Um, the main body color is a speckle that um, I think her name is Carol from Haverland was nice enough to dye for me. Um, after I ordered Unicorn Taco, which is the um, speckled colorway, which is the, the four stripes of um, color, the pink and purple and green and then speckled. Um, and that inspired the sweater. And then I went ahead and um, ordered the speckle for the body. And then as I said last time, I was going to run out um, before I was able to do the collar and the hem at the bottom. It was um, a little bit of odd planning on my part because I upped the sweater size and I did a slightly different sweater. I would have had enough yardage otherwise, um, but I cut myself slightly short and so I went looking through the stash and I found this hot pink, which I thought would be wonderful um, just for the edging. And um, I think this was a really um, odd lot from, um, I think it was Squoosh Dye Works. Um, or squoosh yarns um, and I bought it off of her Instagram ages and ages ago and it is the colorway I used to knit my um, version of West Knits. Oh now I'm gonna blank on the shawl name. The one with all the wedges. I'm gonna completely blank on it but um, it is a little bit of a leftover from that and I pretty much finished that. What I had left over was um, this a very tiny little bit of the hot pink which I will put in my uh, sock weight blanket and then I had a little bit of the leftover sock yarn um, not enough to do anything with I had about 30 grams of it left um, and so I'll figure out something but it's not enough for actual socks I would need probably close to 50 grams 
to do socks for me or for Roxy. So I won't be able to do that, um, but I'll figure out something fun to do with that later on. Um, but that is Roxy's sweater finished. It needs a good washing and blocking. I have not gotten to that yet. Um, in fact, I may throw it in with the uh, laundry that I'm doing today since it's going to be a machine wash and dry sweater. Um, so I will think about doing that. I might wash it on delicate later um, with some other, maybe with my socks. Um, anyway, so that is done. And then I reached the milestone on my sweater that I was hoping to. So just for a quick refresher, this is the Dovetail Sweater by Queen Riverendo. She designed it for Fairmount Fibers um, or for Manos del Uruguay yarns to be used with Allegria Grande and the Bocados, which are um, the small bits of Allegria Grande uh, that they made available for color work. They're just smaller skeins, 25 grams and I think around 100 yards. Um, and so I am doing the, um, like I said, the Dovetail Sweater. I finished the beautiful yoke a while ago and what I did this week is I went down and I finished the body. I am not using Allegria Grande for the background yarn. I am using a small batch front spun from Abundant Earth Fiber um, and it is a uh, DK weight. It is merino and rambouillet so it's really squishy and plump um, and I've been very very happy with it. I had a sweater quantity and was hoping to use it. So I finished the body which means um, the only thing left are the sleeves. This will get long sleeves and it will have a little bit of this um, color work treatment at the cuffs but I have a bunch of projects to cast on so sadly this is probably going to get put away for a bit. I hope I'll pick it back up in August or September. Um, this is going to be one really really warm sweater um, and so I will pick it back up and finish those sleeves right before the fall um, but for now I hit the goal that I wanted to. Um, I believe I finished this on Thursday the first so I was just a little bit behind um, because my goal was to finish both of these by the 30th um, and obviously I did not get to the sleeves but those will work up pretty quickly. It is um what's well, supposed to be a DK weight yarn but I think it's probably closer to worsted or Aran and so it's not gonna take very long to work up those sleeves um and indeed I did two sweaters in a month plus I knit some chickens so um I did just fine this past month so let's talk about the new or um ongoing projects that I worked on uh, the first thing that I took with me, so this weekend um, we went to my mother-in-law's, we left Friday night and we got home today, which is Monday, um, and I decided not to take my wheels with me. Although I do have an e-spinner and I do have a travel wheel, I just decided um, knitting is more conducive to um, sitting and playing games or chatting or watching movies together or whatnot, um, and I just decided not to bother with the wheels. So even though it pained me to leave them home during Tour de Felice, um, I knit all of this weekend, which means I have some things to show you. So um, I had wanted to start a bunch of the sample knits that I have going, um, but for one reason or another, um, I didn't have the yarn or the patterns in time to do all the swatching before I left. Um, and because they are samples, um, I was concerned that I wouldn't get the appropriate swatch. So I'm going to cast a couple of those on this week. Um, while I am at home. I think what I'll probably do is take tonight for swatching and then in the next couple days I can cast those projects on. So I took two projects with me that I had already started and then I took one that I have knit recently enough that I decided I did not need to swatch for and technically it's a sweater for myself anyway so if I got it wrong it will only affect me. Um, so I just went ahead and did that. So the first project that I took with me is I took a charity blanket and if you'll remember I started this um, right at the beginning of June. It looks like another blanket that I did this year. The pattern is Catch Some Waves and it is by Yarnspirations and I found it because it was on um, one of the Karen Big Cakes um, and but it is also available on the website so there will be a link for it in the show notes. It is a really really simple two row chevron pattern. And much like I did before, I had three colors. One was kind of a uh, shrimp or coral. One was a blush that I'm into. I already finished the shrimp coral. I'll show you in just a second. And then one was a real light peach apricot. So basically I was just gonna fade through the three colors. I did a blanket like this either at the end of last year or the, I think the beginning of this year um, that was pinks. It was hot pink and then a medium pink and then a light pink. And so I'm basically recreating the exact same thing. Um, and I am knitting these for a charity. We are gonna donate them to Project Linus at the end of the year. My husband is also working on knitting a blanket um, to donate to charity for his community service project this year for his job. 
So I got fairly far because when we left, I was not at the finish of the shrimp color and I actually, um, I probably doubled the length of this blanket this weekend. So I worked on it quite a bit and I did the, um, I just did a basic two row transition, um, two rows in each color until I ran out of the first yarn and now I am solidly in the second yarn. So I will work on the second yarn for a while until I get towards where I think I should fade in the third yarn and I'm totally eyeballing this. Um, I was much happier with the transition here the last time um, I, I got paranoid a little early and so the transition was super long and I liked that this transition was a little bit um, a little bit shorter in nature um, but basically I will uh, keep going like this and when I'm done the blanket will probably be about 36 by 36 I hope um, that is the goal and we'll see what we get um, I am knitting this so the um, Karen magic cakes or an errand weight and they call for the blanket to be knit on 10s or 11s and I am using Stylecraft DK which I have to say is really lovely. It is an acrylic, it's 100% acrylic, um, but it is a really lovely and expensive yarn. You can get it from Lovecrafts or you can get it from the Wool Warehouse in the UK. It comes in probably 80 or 90 colors I think um, and sort of all kinds of shades so you can put together all different color combinations. This is the yarn that I used last year when I did the three um, blanket kits from Lucy of Attic 24, the crochet blanket kits. It's the one she prefers and I have to say I've really come to like it. It's a DK weight um, so it's not too heavy um, but it's nice and particularly when you are knitting um, cherry blankets and especially when you are knitting blankets to go to Project Linus. Um, Project Linus is blankets for children who are long-term in the hospital. It gives them something to cuddle. Um, but the deal is most of these children are in the hospital for obviously a reason and so the blankets have to go through these sterilizers. So really the only thing that will go through the high heat of a sterilizer is acrylics. Um, wools will felt. Uh, I don't know how cotton will do. Um, but so basically um, the best thing to use for these blankets because they're going through the hospital wash um, is acrylics and so um, I really like using this one. It's pretty soft. It's nice to work with um, and the last blanket that I made I did it on US 6s and I decided that that was a little bit tight so I went ahead and went up to a US 8 this time. What I did is I cast on one fewer repeat um, and I think based on the difference I'm going to come out approximately the same size. We'll have to see when it's done um, but I am guessing that that's where I'm going to get at. So that is progress on that this weekend. This is actually the perfect project to take to my mother-in-law's house because like I said, it's a two-row repeat. It's super easy. Didn't have to pay attention. We played cards and dice and various other things. Um, and it was like a good project to keep me company. So um, that was one of the projects that I worked on. Um, another project that I brought, although I didn't bring it to show you today, is I worked on Miles' scarf a little bit. Um, and I showed you that a while ago. I am making that to go with his snap hat. So I am holding four strands of um, sock weight and doing just a quick, um, I had started doing it as a stockinette stitch scarf and I put a garter edge on it and I wasn't liking the way it was curling. Um, so I switched it to a garter stitch scarf um, and I am working on that, but there's not that much to show you. So I will bring that and show you another time, but I did work on that. And actually the only frustrating thing on that is that I have to check every row really carefully to make sure that I got all four strands because every so often I would look back and find a row where I didn't get all four strands. And I did rip that a bunch of times this weekend so I could go back and um, make sure that I was picking up every strand. So. That is that project and then I have one new cast on which technically you've sort of seen before because it is the second time I am knitting this and as it turns out it's even the same color. So uh, a couple months back I knit the V-Back Tee by Jamie Hoffman of Knitosophy and I knit that as a sample for Zen Yarn Garden and I knit the size 6 um, which I think translated to about the 55 inch bust. So this time I am knitting the size 3 which translates to right around a 40 inch bust that is for me um, and we are, um, I am helping co-host a knit along for Zen Yarn Garden which includes the kit, the pattern, and then also some Zoom sessions. And our first Zoom session is next weekend so I wanted to cast on and get a good start um, also so I could remember sort of the steps in the pattern um, so that anyone who has questions can ask and I will be able to answer them. 
So I am using um, Zen Yarn Gardens Lux Cakes. These are uh, 150 grams, 750 yards of a fringing weight merino cashmere nylon. They are absolutely lovely and they are dyed in gradient colorways. And you may remember this colorway sort of from the previous time. This is called the Rice Tie Gradient and it starts at green and goes out through purple to yellow to red back to, or sorry, purple to red to yellow to red to purple. And I thought it was supposed to go back to green, but I don't have any extra green on this. This skein but that is okay because um I will also have to fade it into a second skein at the bottom of the sweater um because for all sizes except the extra small I think it will take two gradient or one and a partial gradient cakes so this is a sweater that starts um at the top it has a V neck on or a V shaping on one side um, which technically is supposed to be the back but I actually like it worn as the front and then it's just got a regular um, kind of circular I don't even want to say scoop neck because it's not that low um, a regular circular neck in the back so basically the way it is constructed is it's kind of a teardrop shape because you have the rounded neck in the front and then the V neck in the back and so you are going round and round this teardrop shape and there's a variety of other shaping but I don't want to give away the secret sauce um, however, that is sort of um, how it gets started. So I got my ribbing done for the V and you can see that it is kind of a, oof. here we go. You can see this side is the V section. If I hold it carefully, you can probably see it. I'm trying to get this all, oops, that's backwards. Let's do it forwards. This is the V neck section right here. You can kind of see there. Um, and then this is the back section and I have gotten through, um, I got through the first ribbing section and then there's a bunch of different increases and various things in this section. And I am now at the section where um, I am going in pattern for eight inches. So um, I got through all the difficult stuff that I hoped to get through and I will just continue to work on this um, in the next week or two and get through more so that I am ready to um, get to the next shaping section for the second Zoom session, which will be at the end of July. So um, there is still time to get involved in this because the first Zoom session is not till this coming weekend. So if you wanted to order yarn or the pattern, you are welcome to. I believe Zen Yarn Garden will also let you purchase the knit along without purchasing the um, kit, in which case you can buy the pattern and if you have yarn in your stash. Um, this pattern was written to be knit with fingering weight and a variety of colors. Um, I believe she writes the instructions for three, four, and five colors. However, um, we're using the gradient cakes, so we are not transitioning between colors except where one cake ends and another cake begins. So that makes this um, a little bit less, um, I don't want to say stress-free, but you also don't have to pay attention to any of the transitions because you're just going to knit through the colors and through the pattern. So um, I made good progress on that. I think I knit the ribbing and that section on my way out there. And then on Saturday, um, we watched movies and hung out most of the day. And so I worked on this for a good chunk of the day um, and got through what I really wanted to. Um, and I meant to work on it again today, but um, I got an attack of sleepies in the car. And so I took a little nap on the way home. <laughs> so that is the knitting content for this week. Next week I will have another cast on that I can share with you. I have one that I won't be able to, um, but I have a new sweater that I'm casting on. Um, it is called the Lady Fingers and it is by Morgan and I can't remember her last name, um, but it is, um, it will be in Zen Yarn Garden DK in uh, actually some of the colors that I used for the last West Knits blanket that I did for them, the Painting Honeycombs. Um, and it's going to be a fun sweater. Um, I need to swatch for it tonight and then I will get into it and be able to share it with you next week. So it's actually a lot of knitting for someone who's not focusing on knitting right now. I suppose I am a little bit because I have um, those samples and I'm going to need to be working on those in the next couple weeks. But I am also spending a lot of time spinning for the tour. So I will show you my first finished skein. I um, will be taking measurements and getting this listed in the Etsy shop today. I uh, applied it on Thursday before we left and washed it while we were gone. This is Apothecary Fibers in Lichen Hop and it is greens and turquoises and a little bit of gray and it is super pretty. It is Corydale, um, which as I've always said, I love for socks and um, this one I am gonna put up in the shop. Um, I believe it is probably about 300 to 350 yards 
yards. Um, they would make some nice sturdy boot socks. Um, it is not super wash, um, but it is a nice sturdy yarn that wears really well. So if you're not worried too much about non super wash wools, um, I can suggest this one for you. It's got a few curly cues in here, um, but I like a nice tight ply. So like I said, I will be weighing and measuring and um, washing, uh, weighing and measuring that one and getting that up in the shop today. Um, but that is the first finished spin for Tour de Fleece. In general, I have been working on a sweater spin for Hello Yarn. Um, and so I am, this was the first basically four ounces down. I haven't weighed it, but it's probably roughly four ounces. Um, and then I'm really proud of myself because I have spun 12 ounces of singles. This is the first bobbin, which holds eight ounces. And um, I am spinning a semi-solid from Hello Yarn. This was a coordinate that went with a fiber from last year. I believe it was last April's Murmur. It is um, Polworth from the Falklands. And this colorway is called Mudder. And depending on the light, it looks kind of brownish, plumish, um, so it's definitely um, kind of in the burgundy tone and I really, really like that tone with my skin. And so I bought enough to do a sweater. Um, this is eight ounces of singles and I have another four ounces on the wheel and I plan to get back to this tonight. Um, I have three, this is half of what I have to spin. So I had a really, really great first week and I'm hoping maybe I'll get through a good chunk of this this week and then I can ply the third week and I will have a sweater quantity. Um, I have been working on this spin exclusively on my Hanson mini spinner. I did ply the apothecary fibers on the Hanson mini spinner. I took a break um, and took this bobbin off the wheel and plied on there. Um, however, I uh, did the singles for apothecary fiber on my uh, treadle wheel, which is in Ashford Joy. Um, and so I have another braid that I'm going to put on there this week, a little bit of color to break a little bit of the monotony. I am going to be thrilled with the sweater that I make of that semi-solid spin, but it is not as exciting as a lot of the color that I often spin. So this week I am going to be giving a new to me dyer a try. Um, her name is Kumasi. I think that's how it's pronounced. And, uh, they are from the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, this is the shop and it is, oops, let me try and get that in a frame there. So it's Kumasi and it is Kumasi, K-O-O-M-A-S-E-E -E dot Etsy dot com. And this is a hand dyed superwash merino, approximately four ounces. And it's all these greens and white with pops of red. I realize it's a little Christmassy, but it also just made me think fun. Um, and it's just got lots and lots of green. And so I'm going to get that on the wheel this week. Um, it kind of makes me think of lily pads and flowers. Um, I don't know. <laughs> so um, I was excited to give this new dye a try. And uh, this is the colorful braid I will be spinning this week. So I am hoping to be on my way to two pounds. Like I said, I have 12. Basically, I've spun up... Um, 12 ounces of singles plus four ounces of applied yarn. So that's already a pound. And that was just the first week of the tour. I do have a busy couple weeks coming up. I am doing some um, co-hosting of knit alongs, some uh, evening teaching a little bit with Zen Yarn Garden. And then um, I'm also helping them out. They're gonna do some Vogue Knit Live um, vendor booths. And so I have lots of, um, time on Zoom, although I guess that's not this week, that's next week. So this week I will have to devote to sample knits and lots of spinning, and I hope to bring back lots to show you. So I think that's all for me. I hope that you are having a good summer and that it is not too hot where you are, or if you are around the other side of the world, that it's not too cold where you are. Um, we are in the 90s and very, very steamy now, which is about right for us at this time of year. It's not that surprising. Um, but uh, staying indoors to stay cool and um, watching the tour, I have a couple days to catch up on. I hope I'm going to be able to watch a couple stages uh, today. Today is actually a rest day on the tour, but since I took a couple days off, I am going to be spinning today and catching up. So I hope you have a lovely week ahead. I hope I will have lots to show you next week. And until I see you again, I will say as I always do, happy spinning, happy knitting, happy sipping, whether it's tea or not. And I'll see you next time.